Namaste. Welcome. For today, I'd like to discuss the Bhastrika Pranayama, and I will be sharing with you a technique on how you can control, regulate, and refine the flow of both the inhalation and the exhalation so we could safely and effectively achieve one of its most important energetic functions. This is not a beginner's tutorial, and Bhastrika Pranayama is an advanced practice. So if you are not initiated yet, if you're just beginning with your practice, don't do this. Yeah, if you're thinking about doing this, please talk to your teacher so you can discuss the progressive program and the many preparatory requirements, both on and off the mat, leading to a safe and meaningful practice of the Bhastrika Pranayama and the other methods of energy channeling. Right. One of the most important functions of the Bhastrika Pranayama is for us to seal or confine the energy and prevent it from leaking out as we practice the method. Right. And then we're going to utilize this energy, the force of the energy, to continue our cleansing, and the purification of our energetic system, to strengthen our body organs, as well as to train our nadis to absorb more prana out of the breath for various reasons. For example, if you're a healer, before your healing session, you might practice the Bhastrika Pranayama so you can produce more energy. So when you share your energy to others or with others, you won't wear out. For meditation, so we could... Uh, direct our mind to the subtleness, the sensation of the prana. If you're doing your sadhana or confinement, when you limit your consumption of food, you can use the energy uh, from the breath yeah, to supply your vital organs with much needed energy as you do your fast. And for general health and our wellness, our well-being. Right. So we could yeah, effectively yeah, you know, attain the function of sealing the energy yeah, by controlling the flow of both the inhalation and the exhalation. All right, in the Bhastrika Pranayama, right, so as we inspire, you're going to feel it rise. Yeah, so the, the pressure of the breath will not um, go down to the hips or the belly. All right, so the abdomen cavity and the internal support, the Udiyana Bandha, yeah, will lift the sensation of the breath up. So it's rising. Right. Energetically, you're lifting your apana vayu up. The energy of the abs rise. Good. And as the breath enters the body, the gaseous oxygen, the pressure of that um, breath yeah, will only go as low as the bottom of the lungs. We should not allow the pressure of the breath to descend or drop to our hips. All right. As your energy rises, and the oxygen enters, you can find the sensation in the thoracic cavity, thus giving you the energetic lift or buoyancy. And that is the manifestation of the prana. Yeah, this is the sensation of the prana. You will feel light. You will feel open. You will feel like you're hanging, inhaling. So it's ascending. And then energetically inside, you're using the Udiyana Bandha to keep yeah, the vital organs light and suspended, like the Udiyana Bandha catches the vital organs of the lungs and the heart. So you keep yeah, the thoracic cavity supported. So why we should never allow the pressure of the energy to descend down to our abdomen cavity? Right. The reason being is that after the inspiring, can expel the breath out using a dynamic pattern and if you have some more air left inside the abdomen cavity this might cause sharp pain to be felt below the ribs All right. and for example you practice the brastica and you feel the pain sudden pain you experience pain below the ribs it means you are doing the inhalation improperly so the breath definitely enters, but the sensation is rising. Lift the heaviness of the body up. Yeah, so inside the abdomen cavity, it goes narrow. Yeah. As the energy rises and the oxygen enters. Good. And that short retention at the top of the breath, one second, you collect the energy, the prana out of the breath, and then you release just the air, the old air out depleted of its pranic force. Right. So the air that exits the nostrils is less potent 
anymore. Uh, because within you, you absorb already the energy out of the breath. Uh, it's a good drill for you to learn this technique. Just to place one hand on top of the chest and the other hand on the yeah, abdomen cavity or abdomen region. Or as you inhale, you're going to feel yeah, the belly region rise and the sternum rise too. Good. And in keeping your body stable, and the lungs and the thoracic cavity stable, expel the breath dynamically out through the nostrils. And you're going to feel your, your abdomen wall pulls backwards. And the upper chest remains stable. All right, so you're not bouncing it. Not like this. Now, inhale. Stabilize the spine. Exhale. That's the healthy way of practicing the Bastrika Pranayama. You don't bounce it, you don't collapse it. All right. And after the required duration of repetitions, yeah, after the last one, inhale nice and long. And then practice Puraka Kumbhaka, or inhale retention with your head lightly nodding forward and then suspend it as long as it feels like for your vital organs inside. Good, and slowly exhale the breath out. All right, this inhalation after the set is your additional support. Yeah, so you keep the vital organs of the heart and the lungs light and supported inside. Like another energetic lift, good. And as you retain, you absorb more pressure out of the breath and release the old air out. Alternatively, which is much more difficult and challenging, is after the last set, after the last repetition, breathing in. For example, this is your last. Stop. And then hold the rechapa kumbaka or exhalation retention for the a number of seconds, yeah, depending on how it feels like inside. Good. And inevitably, after the Rechaka Pumbaka, there will be some yeah, stagnation or old air left inside. Just exhale the old air up and then inhale and to recover the breath using a natural pattern. All right. While you're doing the retention or the Puraka Pumbaka, whether in the inhalation, the exhalation, your nervous system will sense this sudden change uh, of the homeo homeostasis inside. All right? Because you're altering uh, the levels of force you allow to flow inside your system. Because the Bastrika Pranayama, you are overloading your system with oxygen or prana. Right? And this uh, will yield to high levels of oxygen or uh, hyperventilation for some people, especially if you are a beginner. Uh, there are dangers involved in the, the practice of uh, Basrika Pranayama, hyperventilation or the oversupply of oxygen in the system. Yeah. And as our nervous system responds to the change of homeostasis, it will try to drain out the excess energy, prana, out of our system and this will result in yeah, the body becoming suddenly covered with electricity. Well, you will feel your skin, the whole of your body becomes sensitive like tingling. You might feel your lips tremble or shake or tingle. The fingers, you might feel suddenly your skin becomes cold, but internally you feel warm or hot. You might feel the head bulging or swelling. Yeah, you may feel a bit swooning. Or you may feel that something from the inside is trying to exit your body. That is the excess energy trying to drain out as our nervous systems respond to bring the homeostasis back in our inner system. All right, so if you bandhas and your cardiorespiratory system, they're not strong enough to withstand yeah, this um, 
essential uh, side effect of the Bastrika Pranayama, this could lead to collapse. This could lead to disorientation. This could lead to loss of balance. This could lead to fainting or complete collapse of your consciousness. That is the reason why Bastrika Pranayama should never be practiced while you're standing or you're flowing through your asanas. Because this might lead to a sudden spike of electricity flooding the nervous system in the brain and this might overpower you, you might lose your consciousness. It should only be practiced while you're sitting on a chair with support or on the floor. So just in case you lose your balance, the chair will support you or the floor will be able to catch you if you fall. Rambasika Pranayama is a powerful method of triggering the release of the subtle body. Yeah, the Kundalini energy yeah, could effectively flow out yeah, through the Basrika Pranayama. But the question is this, for what reason? Why do we need to do that? Generally, for most of us, it's not necessary. All right. Because once the Kundalini energy has awakened, there's no turning back. You have to face this energy head on. You don't want this energy to overpower you and control your life. And this will require long term of commitment, of managing every stage of its development until we gain control of her presence and she levels off, which is beautiful. But if you don't have the time, if you have, don't have the commitment, if you don't have the support system, the health, yeah, and it's the many uh, aspects surrounding our lives, our commitment, our priorities, our obligations, you know, both to ourselves and to community. And then here we are, you know, for the sake of awakening her up, doing the process, this could be dangerous. For most of us, we don't need the Kundalini energy to awaken at all. So we can live a meaningful life, a healthy life. But if it's your calling, if the readiness is there, if the support is there, if the guidance is there, and if your spirit is really calling you to the path of the spirituality, it's a beautiful practice. But for most of us, not necessary at all. I didn't awaken my Kundalini energy on purpose, it just happened to me. And I tell you, it's not all beautiful. And it's not necessary at all. You know, the Nadi Shodana, with or without retention in your asana practice, yeah, there are actually more than enough. Yeah, there are more than enough to serve you today and the many years to come. Have a meaningful practice, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Namaste.